Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, count odd numbers in an interval range. We're given two non-negative integers, low and high. So for example, we could be given three and seven and we wanna count the number of odd numbers within this range, including the endpoints three and seven. So how many odd integers are in this range? Well, the easiest thing to do would just be create a loop where we start at three, increment it by two. Well, in this case, this is an odd number, but I guess an even more brute force way would be to just start at three, check if it's an odd number, it is. So we add one to our count, then we go to the next number, four, it's not odd, five is odd, six is not odd, seven is odd, and then I think we'd have three by the end of that. But is there any pattern we can do that will make it so we don't have to go through every single integer? Yes, because odd numbers, I mean, given a range of values, for example, from one to four, how many odd numbers are gonna be in this range? Well, the size of the range is four. We would just divide that by two because every other number is an odd number. So we'd have two odd numbers within that range. Now, the thing that's gonna make this a bit more tricky is that we are starting at arbitrary numbers. We're starting and ending at arbitrary numbers and that will make the math slightly different, which is that this range has five numbers in it and it had three odd numbers. But there's another range of five numbers, which is maybe from two to six, and this range only has two odd numbers. Even though this is a range of five values, it only has two odd numbers, which are three and five. Meanwhile, this one had three odd numbers, and that is because of the end points. Since both of these are even, and we have five numbers, only two of them are gonna be odd. But so far, we're only considering the cases that have ranges that are of odd length. What about ranges of even length? What about from three to six and two to five? This range has four values in it, and two of them are gonna be odd, three and five. This range has four values in it, and two of them are gonna be odd, three and five. Five. When the range is of even length, it doesn't matter. We just take that and divide it by two and we get the number of odd values. But when the range is of odd length, then we have to actually look at the endpoints. And in this case, we really only have to look at one of them because if this range is of odd length, if this guy is odd, then this is also gonna be odd. Same thing with this one. If this range is of odd length, if this one is even, this one is also going to be even. So with all that said, what is the formula then to compute the number of odd values in a range like this one? Well, we're gonna take the length of the range. How do we get that? We can take seven, subtract three. That gives us four. So we actually wanna add one to it. We're off by one because three minus seven would include these values, but we wanna add one to get this as well. So five values in the range, we take that and divide by two. This is integer division. So we're gonna be rounding down. So in this case, we're gonna get two. That works because we don't know. I mean, it could be a range like this, which has two odd values, or it could be a range like this, which has three odd values. Is it a range like this? How do we know? We just check one of the endpoints. I'm gonna choose the first one, three, mod that by two, so is this value odd or not? That's the question we're trying to answer. If we get a remainder of one, that means it's odd. If we get a remainder of zero, it's not odd. So in this case, we get one, it is odd. We take this one and add it to the two over here, which is gonna give us three. So we have three odd values in this range. Whereas this range will only have two odd values because we would do this same computation, except here we would have a four divided by two, it would still give us a two, and we would take this endpoint two, and then mod that by two, and we would get zero, and then we would add these and just get two. So time complexity of this approach is better than the previous one. The previous one was O of N because we had to iterate through the entire range. In this case, it doesn't matter how big or small our range is, the time complexity is going to be constant and we don't need any extra memory complexity for data structures or anything. So now let's code this up. The first thing I'm gonna do is calculate the length of our range because we're gonna need it a couple times. So high minus low plus one, 
Then to initialize our count, we're just gonna say the count is gonna be length divided by two. I'm doing double slashes because in Python you need this to round down. This is gonna be integer division. Now, if the length of our range is even, we can go ahead and just return the count. But if the length of our range is odd, which we can check just like this, and then if one of the endpoints is also odd, which we can check just like this, if both of these are true, then we want to add one to it. But if neither of these are true, or if only one of these are true, then we're not going to add this one. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. It's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.